Hi YouTube, and this is the year in review for the Xbox One 2016. So what I'll be talking about in this video is the console SKUs, which is basically the different models, the default gamepad, the games, but I'll only be talking about the games that are exclusive to the Xbox One. So you need to buy the Xbox One to play these games. A walkthrough of the UI. It'd be really brief, just the basics. Xbox Live. And lastly, the conclusion or like the direction I think Microsoft is going with Xbox One. So the first topic is the, the console SKUs or stock keeping units. Or another way to say this would be the different models of the X, Xbox One. So the first model of the Xbox One is the original model that came out when it first launched, and it's $500. It required a Kinect, which was removed by an initial update. The hard drive is internal, and it's 500 gigabytes, non-removable. It came with a Blu-ray player, but you needed an app for that. And there's an HDMI pass-through, and required an update to play physical games offline because there was a big uh, commotion about the Xbox One being DRM online only. So now they, at the launch of the console, they allow people to update the console to remove the DRM, but the default settings for the original Xbox One has the DRM in it. So then they released a die shrink, which is the Xbox One S. A die shrink basically means that it's the same console, but everything's a lot smaller and more efficient. So there's three different models for the die shrink. There's a 500 internal gigabyte model for $350. There's a one terabyte model for $400. And there's a two terabyte model for $500. And then, remember now, this is the die shrink. So it's the same thing, but smaller. So this one plays 4K Blu-rays and streams 4K, but an app is needed to play uh, 4K Blu-rays. HDMI pass-through. It supports HDR, high dynamic range. So this basically means there's brighter brights and darker darks. So when you see like a scene where there's uh, shadows casting, sometimes detail is lost in the shadow. Same thing with the light. Sometimes there'll be too much bloom. You lose the detail in the light. So with high dynamic range, this allows more detail to have to be within the light section of a screen or the image and the dark section of the image to have more detail while at the same time maintaining the contrast. So it ups the contrast, but maintaining the detail. This has non-removable hard drives. So no matter what model you choose, the 500 gigabyte, the one terabyte or the two terabyte, it's all non-removable. And of course, this, the size of the console is smaller and it looks different, slightly different. There's more, um, there's the, all the buttons on the console is it are actual buttons. There's no touch capacitive buttons at all, which uh, some people like, some people don't like. The new die shrink or the Xbox One S can supports the vertical and horizontal console positions. It, re it requires an update to play the physical games offline. And there's a built-in IR blaster, which I think is to replace the remote. So, so you can have like the one re universal remote to turn on all your devices through the Xbox One's IR blaster. That'll be it for the Xbox One. And the last console would be Project Scorpio. The details are unknown. They're not really official yet. This is gonna be released in 2017. It's, it's said to be a native 4K console. And some of the specs have been released, but I won't be talking about it here. And it's supposed to enhance VR experiences. So I'm hearing that this new Project Scorpio console is gonna have VR capabilities and it's going to enhance VR stuff. So that would be interesting. And that will be it for the different models. So the only two models that have been released is the original model, which is the Xbox One, the original Xbox One. Then the die shrink is called Xbox One S. And then the new one that's coming out in 2017 is called Project Scorpio. So it might be called Xbox One Scorpio or Xbox One and something else. But for now, the next name for the new Xbox is Project Scorpio. The default Xbox One controller or default gamepad has Bluetooth now, so it adds more range with the Xbox One. It's compatible with PC, tablets, and phones, but I haven't tested this yet. 
it now it has a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack so this means any headset that's not USB will be most likely compatible with the new Xbox One controller and the new controller has textured handles for I guess better grip and lastly batteries are sold separately so you still need to buy batteries or you still need to buy rechargeable batteries but the batteries are removable without any screws or additional tools so that's a plus but you still need batteries independently from the the controller itself and that'll be it for the controller because they haven't made too much design changes to the controller so overall the controller is pretty much the same just added more features to it now I'll be talking about the video games so the games I'll be talking about here are exclusive to Xbox One so you need an Xbox One to get these games otherwise if the games aren't listed here and you're saying they're on Xbox One but not on PS3 or 4 or whatever that means it's most likely on PC so if it's on more than one platform then it's not an exclusive it could be a brand exclusive but not an exclusive so you don't need an Xbox One to play it but you can buy PC to play it or PS4 to play it so just Keep that in mind when you're looking at this list. And there's about 13 exclusives for the Xbox One. I can name them all right here. Crimson Dragon, Dance Central Spotlight, Fighter Within, Forza Motorsport 5, Fru, that's F-R-U, Halo 5 Guardians, Halo, the Master Chief Collection. So with remasters, or like, uh, yeah, I guess remasters, some people will maybe debate whether or not it's an exclusive or not so you can play the original on an older console or an older device but if you want the remaster the remaster is exclusive to the xbox one so that's why i incorporated the remaster here so the master chief collection even though it's about previous installments on other devices if you want the remaster or the basically yeah the remaster you need it on the xbox one so moving on Connect Sports Rivals, Power Star Golf, Rare Replay, Shape Up, Sunset Overdrive, and Xbox Fitness. So if any of these games speak out to you in any shape or form, then get the Xbox One. Otherwise, if your game wasn't mentioned here, it's most likely because it's on PC or on another console. So keep in mind, this is what creates incentive for people to buy the console, is the exclusive games available on the console so even though the games aren't on the ps4 keep in mind that if it's on the pc you don't really need the xbox one to play it so if someone can buy a ps4 and get those other games on the pc and not touch an xbox one so keep that in mind about why i have the exclusives here is to create incentive for the people to buy the console itself and not necessarily to have a game that's not on the PS4 but it's also on the PC that's not really an, an incentive to buy the console because it's not only on the platform it's on another platform so you have choices so keep that in mind and why I have the exclusives here keep in mind that this list may vary it might be more exclusive might be less exclusive but I'm not gonna go through every single game that the Xbox one has with a fine-tooth comb I'm just getting the gist of the exclusives, and this is what I came up with. 13 exclusives, meaning that 13 incentives for people to buy the Xbox One. So, so right now you're seeing the home screen for the Xbox One. So this is the home page, the community page, the one guy page, and the store page. So going back to the community, uh, the home page, this window here is what I was currently doing. On the top right is my games and apps. And then I guess this is advertisement for something in the store. And these are like various advertisements on the right. On the bottom here, this is what was currently being played on the Xbox One or used. So I was playing Gears of War 4. I was on EA Access, Netflix, Rare Replay. And these are pins. So this. This is basically apps or settings or anything within the UI that you want to get to real fast. These are like quick writes or like um, 
a fast way or shortcuts to get to certain points within the UI. So this is the one, this is the home page. Next page is the community page. This is where like your friends list and people on your friends list can, that's all their, their stuff associated with the post, with their games, what they watch, what they achieved. And on the right is clubs on Xbox. Those are like basically like groups on Xbox Live, what's trending on Xbox Live, and there's various advertisements. The next page is the one guide. Basically, it sort of aggregates what's popular or what services are popular or what apps are popular within Xbox and sort of have like featured content associated to whatever service or app that it's uh, associated with. So for example, Crackle, new in movies, uh, homecoming trailer, this is, I guess this is Spider-Man, Inferno, official trailer. So I guess trailers are popular here. I guess uh, Black Man is one of the movies that are popular or new. So TV shows, so this is top action adventure TV. I guess this is Microsoft movies and TVs. So F The Flash is number one. And then Arrow, Supernatural, Supergirl, and DC Legends of Tomorrow, and, and so on and so forth. The next page is the store. This top bar here is uh, the advertisement. I think here is the overall featured content within the store. And then down here, it's what is featured to uh, what content associated to the type of segregated content or category of content. So basically browsing games. So here, this would be the featured games. And then here would be browsing apps, the second part here. Uh, what featured apps are available on Xbox Live and movies, what are featured here for the movies and TV shows and movie and uh, what do you call it, music. So that's basically it. So this is what you mainly see when you open, when you start up your Xbox One. And then you double click the home button and it has a side menu. But keep in mind, there are various ways to access various content within the UI. So that was one way of accessing the side menu. There are various ways to access the side menu, or at least I know another way. There could be another, I may not know, a third way, but I only know of two. So this is the profile. These are my friends and clubs. Here is parties, achievements, messages, notifications, and settings. And then at the bottom is multitasking. So if you want to shift your focus from one function to the next or one activity to the next, you can do that. You come out of there. You can press the, the menu button. And the menu button is, is uh, it's, uh, it's associated to whatever content is active. So games and apps is what recently was open. I can quit that. Now it's back to Gears of War, which is what I recently had open. I can pop in there. Go into Gears of War. Go back to the home screen. I can press the information button. Nothing happens. But the menu button. Here you can pin to the home. Manage game. Quit. Get some help. And on the side is the game hub. Which is pretty cool. And then they have like uh, achievements you can share. So you go here. You got something to share. And this is what I did in Gears of War. If I want to share it, I can share it. Or I can just back out. So what else can I show you? So I can go to the profile really, really quick. There you go. This is how you access the profile. This is the information. This is basically what other people see when they want to look at your profile. This is my profile here, Terminator TX3. The next page is activity feed. Basically what I have achieved or what I have done or what am I up to on Xbox. So recently I've been playing Gears of War four so this is what's new with me their achievements my friends what I how I stack against my friends and then how uh, how many games or then my game comparison so like how many achievements have I got per game and how many do I have per ratio of what 
how many achievements you can get. So I got 13% of all the achievements you can get in Gears of War 4. In Halo 5, I got 21% of all the achievements you can get in Halo 5 and so forth. The next page is following and clubs. Honestly, I'm not sure what the two are, but giving uh, the names, following is most likely individuals and clubs are most likely groups. But don't quote me, I could be wrong, but I'm, that's my guess of what they are. And then the last thing here is captures. So what the game had captured for me or what I captured myself and is stored on the hard drive or the cloud or whatever, however this is stored. And usually I'm, I'm playing a lot of Halo because Halo is really competitive. So on the Xbox, I tend to play a lot of Halo. So I'm a big Halo fan on Xbox, but my main console is PS4. But keep in mind, I, I'm a big Halo fan. That's pretty much it for the UI. I'm not going to go through settings. The one guy I went through. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for the Xbox One UI. There's not much I can think of. Oh, I can. I'll go quickly to the games and apps. So, my games and apps. So, these are my games, whether digital or physical. I have downloaded so these are currently active downloads so these are what is download this is what it <clears throat> this is what is downloaded on my Xbox and then down here are apps and this is the blu-ray app so when you want to play blu-ray discs or movies you need to download the blu-ray app in order for that to happen if you do not do that you cannot play blu-rays so keep that in mind and these are various uh, functions and apps and settings with the Xbox One. There's EA Access Hub. Let's see if I can get in. If it takes too long, I'll back out. Why join? Okay, so it's up to, so there's 38 full games you can play. Play new EA, uh, EA games first and 10% discount, which is pretty cool. So full games, 38 titles, play first, discount. And these are the s subscription plans. So it's $5 per month and then $10, uh, $30 per year. Exit out of here. Okay, I didn't want to do that, but whatever. So here's my games and apps. So now I'm going down to ready to install. So with games with gold, you can purchase a game, but you don't have to necessarily download the game. So you can acquire a game, but not necessarily actively download it. So these are acquired games or games that I have um, purchased or associated to my account. So now these are mine forever, but they're not really, but they're not downloaded. So keep in mind that you can purchase or acquire content and not necessarily download them as you acquire them or purchase them. And these are updates. So this is what was updated. Apps, settings, whatever. And then the queue is basically what is actively being downloaded. But since there's nothing being downloaded, it just shows what was currently downloaded. So EA Hub, let's say for example, EA Hub or EA Access, Gears of War 4 and Blu-ray player app was being downloaded. You will see a percentage of how much is being downloaded and see the progress that way. And once it's all done, it looks like this. So I think I went through everything. So that's basically the overview of the Xbox One UI. It's pretty simple. There's sometimes a lot of uh, loopholes you have to go through to get to certain content. But remember that there are various ways of accessing certain content. There's not just one way. It's, multi it's usually two different ways to access various content. Like with the side menu, I went to the side to get to the side menu. Or if I'm on this page, 
I can just press the home button twice and get the side menu again. So keep in mind there's various ways to access certain content. Once you get used to the UI, it's not that bad, but sometimes you have to go through a lot of loopholes to get to where you want. So the pins are useful for that. And that's about it. That is the Xbox One UI for 2016. So let's talk about Xbox Live. There are two memberships, Silver and Gold. With Silver, it's free, but there's no multiplayer, online multiplayer. So that aspect of video games will be deactivated for you. But once you pay for Gold membership, there are three options. There's a $60 uh, a year option, $25 per quarter, which is three months, and $10 per month. And Xbox Live supports card operations. That means create, read, update, deactivate. These are basic pro programming operations. So when you're making software, you should have CRUD operations implemented. And Xbox Live has this. So when you create a username, the username is editable, but with a fee. And there's also something called Games with Gold. So there's Xbox One games and Xbox 360 games. So with Xbox One games, they're only accessible with an active gold membership, but with the Xbox 360 games, they are acquired through the Xbox subscription, but they're still accessible after the, the subscription has canceled. So I'll repeat that. Xbox 360 games are acquired through an, a gold membership, but can still be accessible after the gold membership has been canceled. And you can also have discounted games and there's automatic cloud saving. So when you have an internet connection and uh, you sign into Xbox Live, your saves, your game saves will be automatically saved to the cloud. So you don't have to do anything about that. So Xbox has EA Access. The prices for EA Access is $5 per month or $30 per year. There are about 38 titles to have unlimited access to. You can have early access to EA games and also you get discounted prices for purchasing digital EA games. So that's pretty cool if you're into that. Xbox has this and I don't think the PlayStation has this. So it's, this is exclusive to the Xbox One and probably PC, I'm not too sure. But keep in mind that EA access is on Xbox One. And basically think of it like Netflix for games, but only specifically for EA games. So a lot of sports games will be available here. You might have early access to Titanfall. I'm not sure. I don't have an EA Access subscription. Keep in mind, EA Access is independent from Xbox Live. So if you want to play those EA games with, uh, with the multiplayer, you probably need Xbox Live on top of your subscription. So keep that in mind. So EA Access is independent from Xbox Live. So in order to play those, those EA games uh, with other people online, you need Xbox Live on top of your subscription. So keep that in mind. Lastly, I'll be talking about the conclusion or like the direction I think Microsoft is going with Xbox One. And in a nutshell, I think Microsoft is trying to make Xbox One a console where it has the best versions of your console games. So they're not going for many exclusives, but they're going for whether or not the game is on their platform and is it the better version of the game you want on the PS4. I think that's the direction they're going with because they don't have much exclusives. The last thing I want to mention with the Xbox One is that most people who gravitate to the Xbox One, they gravitate to the console versions of PC games. So it would be like Gears of War, Quantum Break, ReCore. And there's a couple other PC games that also have console versions that are on the Xbox One. And that tends to be the gravitation to for many gamers. And also, I think Microsoft is trying to have the better version of PlayStation 4 games. So keep in, that in mind that most of the draw for the Xbox One is partially Xbox Live and also partially console versions of PC games but they don't really have much exclusives. So keep that in mind that this is like an in-between console. It kind of like tries to fit in that gray area 
uh, where you don't want to go completely PC at the same time. You don't want PlayStation and you it's like the online that they want at the same time you have to pay for it on the PC it's free so it's like that gray area that's where they're working in and that's the audience that they tend to gravitate to or that's what the audience gravitates to or that's the audience that they gravitate to one or the other however you see it so when it comes to grading the Xbox one in 2016 I would grade it as a C minus and the pros to the Xbox One has console versions of PC games, supports CRUD operations, that's create, read, update, deactivate, programming basics, expandable hard drive through USB, and Microsoft is converting Xbox 360 digital games to be playable on Xbox One using the physical disc as authentication if not owned digitally with no fee added unless you want to buy the Xbox 360 games digitally but if you already have the physical game, you can pop that in. And then using the disc as authentication, will download the, the 360 game digitally. And you can play the game that way. And that will be it for the pros. The cons. The console is useless if not updated initially. So you need an internet connection to update the console. Or your games will not be playable. Because of the DRM always online. Keep that in mind. Console might be pointless to collect for after support has dropped since the default settings is designed for an always online, meaning that offline games need an online connection. So let's say, for example, they, they drop support, Microsoft drops support for the Xbox One, and some, for some reason your hard drive burned down. Then when you replace the hard drive, the internal hard drive, when you void the warranty and open the, the Xbox One, and you pop in a new hard drive, it will go back to the default settings and you can't play your physical games no more. Let alone since the support has dropped, you can't connect to the online servers, which I hope that wouldn't happen. But since video game console manufacturers tend to do this, this can be a reality. So therefore this is a con. Uh, the Xbox one has fixed internal hard drives. So meaning that you cannot replace the hard drive without voiding the warranty. As of right now, there's about 13 exclusive titles for the Xbox One. There are slow downloads for digital and physical media. So when you pop in an Xbox One game, it, it downloads the game from the disc onto the hard drive, internal hard drive or external hard drive. And that takes a long time. It takes about 30 to 45 minutes. And I think the PS4, it takes about one or two minutes for the majority of the data to download especially when, when it comes to physical, and you can start playing the game almost instantly while it's downloading the background, especially if it's single player. If it's multiplayer, it will take some time, but single player, you can pop, you can go right in uh, the single player without any hiccups or anything like that. The 4K Blu-ray playback, an app is needed for the Xbox One. And lastly, DLC with exclusive titles often locks players from game modes that were once available at launch until the player buys DLC. So with this last one, it has an asterisk beside it because it tends to be a common practice for Microsoft. So this tends to happen with Halo games and Gears of War. Let's say for example, Halo 5 is released and there's a game mode called SWAT. So you play on SWAT ever since the game was launched. And then all of a sudden there's DLC launch for Halo 5. For now, it stays open. And then maybe six, seven months after DLC is launched, now SWAT is deactivated for people who don't have DLC. And it will be reactivated once you have DLC. And that tends to happen with Microsoft owned IPs or games that Microsoft has published. So keep that in mind. This may happen with this generation. But it happened a lot with the last generation, with the Xbox 360. So they, they tend to keep out people from game modes that were once available at launch, but deactivated once DLC was available for about a certain amount of time. And they'll be reactivated once you buy the DLC for that particular game. And sometimes it, it required all the DLC, and sometimes it required one or two. But for the most part, it required all the DLC to reactivate the game modes that were once available at launch. So keep that in mind. This may happen. This may not happen.
but it seems to be a common practice for Microsoft. That will be it for the 2016 year in review for the Xbox One.